logging. As with most Microsoft applications, IIS provides extensive logging capabilities to let you, the administrator, know exactly what's going on with your web server as well as who's trying to access your content. Now out of the box, IIS supports four different types of logs. The W3C Extended Log File Format, the Microsoft IIS Log File Format, the NCSA Common Log File Format, and ODBC Logging. The W3C Extended Log File Format has more options than the other logging types, and this can be useful for knowing absolutely everything about your web server. Now the main disadvantage to using the W3C Format is that it has so many logging options, it can get a little more cumbersome managing your logs, as there's often too much unnecessary information. Next we have the Microsoft IIS log file format. Now being a Microsoft logging type, it doesn't have the same direct level of compatibility with other non-Microsoft web server types, but it is written in a comma separated format, which does make it relatively easy to manipulate with scripts or to import into other applications. The main disadvantage is that the Microsoft log format doesn't provide that much information. Next we have the NCSA common log file format. The NCSA, by the way, stands for the National Center for Supercomputing Application. Now, as the name suggests, the NCSA common log file is rather common, and as such, you can expect most other non-Microsoft web servers to support this format. Now, the downside to this log file format is that it cannot log FTP site information, and like the IIS format, it only logs basic information. Now ODBC logging is the final type that IIS supports. Being ODBC, you can log to a database rather than a static text file like the other logging types. Now because you're logging to a database, you'll probably find that producing reports and statistics on your web server is much easier as you have the power of a real database behind you. Now the main disadvantage is that being database driven, a lot of third party applications aren't compatible with this format. Surprisingly, even though ODBC logging is database driven, it doesn't really log as much info as it probably could. All in all, if it's extensive logging capabilities you're after, then the W3C extended log file format will give you more information than the other log file formats. Now logging is configured at either the individual site level or the individual component level of IIS. Now by component, I mean you either configure logging at the entire web server or FTP server level, or you can configure logging at the individual website or FTP site level. Now in our IIS MMC, if we right click on websites and select properties, on the default tab, the website tab, down the bottom here, we can see this checkbox enable logging which is selected by default. Now the default logging type is the W3C log file format. By selecting the drop down box, you can change this to one of the other types that we've already talked about. Now if we select properties, we have two tabs, general and advanced. On the general tab, we can select how often we want to start a new log. The default being to create a new log for each day, but you can certainly change that if you like. Now we can also specify to create a new log if it reaches a certain size. And that would be really useful, especially on popular websites where you can expect thousands and thousands of hits. So rather than your log file growing to unrealistic proportions every day, you can manage them more efficiently with this option. Now we also have the option to use the local time for naming our log files. Now this option only becomes available if you're using the W3C extended log file format. And that's because with the exception of the W3C format, all other log formats use local time to determine when it's midnight. W3C uses universal time format, which is already a 24 hour format. So it's easy to distinguish between 12 AM and 12 PM. Now while I'm on the subject of time, it's wise to double check that your time zone is set correctly on your web server. Because if it's wrong, your logging times will be incorrect and this can affect your ability to analyze your logs properly. Now finally down the bottom here, we can see the path where our logs files will be stored and that's in the Windows System32 log files directory. And for our W3C log file format, this will be under the W3 SVCX directory. Now the default naming convention for your log files will be EX followed by the year, the month, the day, and then .log. Now do bear in mind that any changes that we make here will affect all of our websites and any new websites that we happen to create in our web server. 
And that's because we're looking at the properties of all websites up here and not just a specific website. Now our other option on this window here is the, of course the advanced tab. We can see some of the obvious things that you'd expect to log such as the time and date that users tried to access your website. We can also select more specific things such as the user's IP address, their username, and even more specific things such as how many bytes were sent and received. Now if we cancel this, we'll go to our default website, we'll right click and again we'll select properties. Now you'll instantly note that this tab appears identical to what we just looked at a moment ago. Now the main difference here is that applying changes on this screen will affect only this website and no other sites that we might have on our server. Okay, enough talking about logs, let's go and take a look at what a web server logs looks like. Of course here we'll be using the default log of IIS 6 which of course is the W3C extended log file format. Now we'll open up Internet Explorer and we'll attempt to navigate to a couple of pages to see if we can generate some events in our log file. So I'm just going to type in server01 slash test.htm and hit enter. Now as you probably would have guessed because this is a default IIS installation and I don't actually have any of my own pages here this results in a 404 error as the page doesn't exist on our web server. Okay so let's go and throw in a request for a page that does exist. So we'll type in IIS start dot htm and hit enter. And as you can see we've been given an under construction page which is a default page included with IIS. So now let's go and open up my computer and we'll check out the IIS log to see what it can tell us about this error. So to get to our log files we'll go to our C drive, Windows, System32, Log Files and finally to our W3 SVC1 directory. Now of course our log file format is written in the format EX followed by the year 04, followed by the month of October and of course the date 01. Okay we'll double click on this file to open it up with Notepad and if you do happen to have a lot of data logged you might want to scroll all the way down to the bottom to get the most current events. Now on the first line here we can see the time and the date which this entry occurred. We can see the IP address of our server and we can see that this was a GET request for our test.htm file. Now the request came in on port 80, the standard HTTP port. And the request came from 10.0.0.10 .10, which happens to be the IP address of this server. Now this would display the IP address of an external visitor under normal circumstances or perhaps the IP address of their proxy server if they happen to be using one. Now next we can see what type of browser was being used. And next, which version of Windows the request came from. Now Windows plus NT plus 5.2 indicates the request came from a Windows 2003 server. Now Windows 5.1 entry would represent Windows XP and Windows 5.0 is for Windows 2000. Now we'll scroll over a little bit more. And over here on the far right we see the error. Now you'll note that the request for our test.htm page resulted in a 404 error indicating that the page wasn't found. Now in contrast we do have another page here the IIS start page which was successful and this results in a code 200 indicating the successful request. Now you might also have noticed over here on the left that there was a request for an image file pageerror.gif and that's simply there because the image appeared on our IIS start page, just up here. Now before we wrap up this discussion, we've already talked about the four logging options that you have, but I might point out that there's actually another logging method available and it's called centralized binary logging. Now with centralized binary logging, all websites on a server write their logs to a single file. Now this option can be really useful if you have a lot of individual websites on a single server because having thousands of log files written concurrently can really take up a lot of system resources. And because central logging uses a single binary file to log data instead of a text file, this can really help improve the performance of your server. Now centralized binary logging is only configured at the server level, so if you do decide to enable it, it will apply to all sites on your server and you'll no longer be able to configure logging on individual sites after you've set up centralized binary logging. 
Now, centralized binary logging isn't configured through the IIS MMC like other log file formats. It's configured through the command line. So we'll open up a command prompt and we'll navigate to our INET pub directory followed by our admin scripts directory. Now inside this directory, you'll see a file called adsutil.vbs and we'll need to call this file using cscript. So we'll need to enter in the following command, cscript, followed by the name of the file and we'll set the W3C service to use the centralized binary logging and then we'll need to set this to be true. Now running this command will set our W3C log file format to be binary, but you will need to restart the www service for this to take effect. Now the log files will be written into the same directory that we've already talked about, but the file extension will now be .ibl or Internet Binary Log Format. Now the important thing to understand here is that once you set centralized binary logging to be true, you can no longer open the log files with Notepad, and that's because the log files are now written in a binary format. Instead, you'll need to use the binary log parsing tool that's found in the IIS 6 resource kit. So make sure that you download the resource kit if you intend considering using binary logging as an option. Now, once you do download the resource kit, you'll find chapter 10 and also appendix F of the IIS resource kit manual useful for information about centralized binary logging. In this video, we've discussed the different logging types that you'll find in IIS 6. Remember that the best information regarding what's happening on your IIS server is to be found in the IIS logs in the Windows System32 log file directory. Now, if you're a security conscious type and you happen to be auditing file access on your server, then you'll also find the auditing logs in the security event log rather useful as well. Now regardless of how many hits your web or FTP server receives, logging successful or failed attempts on your server is not only a good measure of what people are looking for or whether people are behaving themselves, but it's nice to know what content is popular. This information can really assist you when it comes to further planning and disaster recovery for your IIS servers.